The Impaler is one of the world's most persisting mass cultural fascinations. Since May 26, 1897, the year Bram Stoker's Dracula was launched, Vlad's story appeared in more than 90 editions in over 60 countries. His character stars in over 200 films that have been viewed by millions of people. Yet what we have not been told is that Vlad had no involvement in the story of the castle we have constantly been shown or read about as being his castle, the Castle of Bran. If the Castle of Bran is not Dracula's castle, did he in fact have a castle in Transylvania? Who well, came up with the lie about the Castle of Bran being Dracula's castle? I can't believe it. Everybody knows it as being the Dracula's castle. So who did this castle belong to? Why then is Dracula associated with the Castle of Bran? Has the real story of the Castle of Bran ever been told? If the Castle of Bran is not Vlad's castle, then why did they capitalize on it? People would ask these questions, knowing that I've been working on a story on Vlad the Impaler. Although I had done extensive research on Vlad the Impaler, I had only vague ideas of the true history of the Castle of Bran, and had found no true reference connecting it with Vlad. So, I thought of visiting this castle on my research trip to Transylvania. In December 1999, I was ready to fly to Romania. After an 11-hour flight and another 17 hours of driving, we arrived in the city of Brasov. A pale light misted over the 800-year-old city. Founded in the 13th century, the city of Brasov was a major center of trade and industry in the Middle Ages. It enjoyed considerable autonomy under the reign of the Habsburg Empire. Brasov is also a noted resort and winter sports location. The city is a road and rail junction and it is a major industrial center. The city of Brasov is located at the foot of the Subcarpathian Mountains, approximately 30 kilometers away from Bran. The next day we left Brasov, heading for the castle of Bran. We drove through a countryside that was set off against the background of vivid sky and pine forests. Flat slabs stuck geometrically on the surrounding mountainsides. At last, we entered the Canyon of Bran. On one side, there was a mountain, and on the other, a rocky cliff. The Castle of Bran rose high into a cold December sky, atop of the rocky peak. Reaching it, I took a moment's rest, occupying myself by considering the many stories I've heard about this castle. The more I thought about them, the more surprising they became. But I could see quite easily how one could be led to believe that this austere setting was connected to Vlad. Finally, I was ready to enter the castle. The questions people asked me back in Calgary echoed in my mind. Then they disappeared all at once. As I began to climb up the staircase that led me into the castle, the sense of time washing over me. A mixture of voices came in from the castle courtyard, alternating with their echo, which the walls of the entrance hall would resound over and over again. Back in Calgary, I had never imagined the castle of Bran as a cheerful place. I imagined it having the depressing atmosphere of a cemetery combined with the mystery of a phantom's haunting place. I wasn't able to imagine myself entering it without an unconscious sigh, 
Not for the sorrows that would hang in it like invisible webs, but my own sense of history in walking in such surroundings. The day before, I approached a local guide, and she offered herself to take me through the majestic citadel of Bran. The castle of Bran was built in 1377. Initially, its purpose as a fortress was to watch over the most important road of commerce, connecting Transylvania to Wallachia. Inhabitant lords of various military ranks managed the castle over the years. As a means of support, the castle was allotted an estate covering nine surrounding villages. At the turn of the 15th century, the castle was entrusted into the care of Mircha the Old, the ruler of Wallachia. Following his reign, the municipality of the city of Brasov took control over the castle. On December 1st, 1920, the municipality of the city of Brasov donated the castle to Queen Maria, the Queen of Grand Romania. Thus, the castle became a wonderful royal summer residence. Queen Maria of Romania was born at Eastwell Park in Kent, Princess of Great Britain. She was the daughter of the Duke of Edinburgh, Queen Victoria's second son. Her mother was a Russian Grand Duchess. This made Princess Maria a niece of King Edward VII and first cousin of both the Emperor Nicholas II of Russia and of King George V. Throughout her life, Queen Maria devoted much time to promoting Romania's best interests by writing books and articles and discussing its needs with other international leaders. She herself tells the Romanian people, I was only 17 years old when I came among you. I was young and ignorant, but proud of my country of origin. And today, I am proud to have been born an Englishwoman. But because I adopted a new nationality, I worked hard to become a good Romanian. That was not easy at the start. I was a foreigner in a foreign land, alone among people I did not know. I became yours through joy and pain. No man is judged fairly while he is still alive. Only after death is he remembered or forgotten. Perhaps you will remember me because I loved you deeply, and I tried to serve you with all my heart. For my heart was strong, all accepting, impulsive, and later it became patient exceedingly patient. In 1957, the Castle of Bran opened its doors to visitors as a state historical museum housing a great collection of feudal art. The castle has four guard towers and has 57 rooms on its four floors. Passages and corridors that existed on the first floor during the Middle Ages were turned into royal reception halls during the reign of Queen Maria. Like all castles, Bran has its own secrets. This is a secret staircase. It was installed when the castle was first built and connects the first and third floors. At some unknown time, it was walled off and its existence only became known when the castle was restored. If we follow this way, we land in the music room. This room was chosen to be the music room because of its desirable acoustics. A few pieces of furniture along with some 17th and 18th century ceramics of Italian and German origin are kept in here. All the furniture in the castle is antique, dating from the 14th to the 18th century. This is the council room. It is located on the first floor and contains antique furniture, including this table brought here from a monastery in England during the reign of Queen Maria. This way leads to a small terrace. From here, the royal family used to watch shows in the interior courtyard of the castle. The shows were related to the medieval times. From this angle, we can see one of the round towers of the castle. During the Middle Ages, this tower was used as a storage place for gunpowder, and it is still called the Gunpowder Tower. An Aeolian harp was mounted on top of the round tower during the reign of Queen Maria. Whenever the wind blew, the harp would play Bach. It doesn't work that way now, but it is said that when the wind blows from a certain direction, the harp makes a strange, mournful sound. If we climb down this way, 
we enter the royal apartment. In here is one of the most precious pieces of all the furniture in the castle. It is a Leobald de Combe bed, made in Italy in the 17th century and brought here for the queen. From the bedroom, we enter the living room. The living room is furnished in Austrian Baroque furniture. This piece, a ceramic chimney, was made of Saxon ceramic, made in the 18th century. Two climbing plants grow in the interior courtyard of the castle. One of them is a vine with an unknown history. The other one is a hundred-year-old ivy, which stays green throughout the entire year. Centuries turn into new centuries. New generations give new meanings to the story of the castle of Bran. Although it was known to be his castle for more than a hundred years, Vlad had no involvement in the story of this castle. Vlad lived five years of his life in this castle, the castle of Hunedara, located in western Romania. It is the only castle in Transylvania that Vlad was ever connected to. Bram Stoker unconsciously misplaced the medieval citadel of Hunedara somewhere in the northern territory of Romania. Others, later, wrongly associated Vlad with the castle of Bran, located in southern Romania. So the lies about the castle of Bran being Vlad's castle sprang from imperfect knowledge of history and geography. The true story of the castle of Bran is given to the world with the hope that Vlad will no longer be associated with this castle. As a result of Stoker's mix of fact and legend, Vlad became a figure in myth. The proto-vampire, the master of the undead, and forever Count Dracula. Still, Vlad the Impaler whispers over the mist of centuries with his dying breath to say, I, Vlad the Impaler, a demon yet not cursed by God, for in my dying hour, he sent his angel to give me peace. See my life fading away like smoke above the earth. My last dreams in their earthly clothing chase while I'm wondering what on earth am I to do.